Lots of Tesla stock news today, let's go through everything. To long-term Tesla stock investors like me, this is not just huge news, this is actually mega news, I agree with this. Everyone is talking about this on Twitter slash X today, Tesla stock bulls are impressed, Sawyer is impressed, and I, at first, I thought, well, this is not that big of a deal, but then I kept going through it and I realized this is a huge deal. Reuters is reporting that Tesla just reinvented car making with a quiet breakthrough. Tesla has combined a series of innovations to make a technological breakthrough that could transform the way it makes electric vehicles and help Elon Musk achieve his aim of having production costs five people familiar with the move said. And it starts to get interesting here. In a bid to extend its lead, Tesla is closing in on an innovation that would allow it to diecast nearly all the complex underbody of an EV in one piece rather than about 400 parts in a conventional car that people said. So right now Tesla can only gigacast the front and the rear, but not the underbody. Gigacasting the underbody as well, that would be... <laughs> Quite impressive. The know-how is scored to Tesla's unboxed manufacturing strategy unveiled by Chief Executive Musk in March, a linchpin of his plan to churn out tens of millions of cheaper EVs in the coming decade and still make a profit, the sources said. A president of a US engineering company said if Tesla managed to gigacast most of the underbody of an EV, it would further disrupt the way cars are designed and manufactured. And you can count on this, that it's really going to be just a matter of time before this actually happens. And perhaps, in a way, it's sort of already in the very beginning stage of actually starting to happen. It is an enabler on steroids. It has a huge implication for the industry, but it's a very challenging task, said one of the former GM employees. Two of the sources said Tesla's previously unreported new design and manufacturing techniques meant the company could develop a car from the ground up in 18 to 24 months, while most rivals can currently take anywhere from three to four years. That would be a huge deal. And this is pretty big. The five people said in a single large frame, combining the front and rear sessions with the middle underbody where the battery is housed could be used in Tesla's small EV, which it aims to launch with the price tag of 25,000 by the middle of the decade. But check this out. Tesla was expected to make a decision on whether to diecast the platform in one piece as soon as this month. Three of our sources said, it, though, even if they do press ahead, the end product could change during the design validation process. In other words, Tesla should have at least the basic technology already, and it could already take advantage of it right now, today. Did I say already? This is a big deal. And based on how quickly Wall Street reacts, maybe... Uh, three months later, we might hear a comment about it finally, and then Tesla stock may go up a lot. Or maybe instead of three months, it will be three years. I mean, only now Morgan Stanley is starting to understand that Tesla is a tech company, not a, just a car company. Many investors wonder why other automakers are not able to copy Tesla's giga castings. Well, this answers it. Once a large metal test mold has been made, machining tweaks during the design process could cost $100,000 ago or redoing the mold altogether might come to $1.5 million according to one casting specialist. Another said the whole design process for large metal mold would typically cost about $4 million. That has been deemed prohibited by automakers, especially as a design might need half a dozen tweaks or more to achieve a perfect die from the perspective of noise and vibration, fit and finish, ergonomics and crashworthiness, the sources said. And add on top of that, 20 models that we produced with, you know, not all that many sales. You want to pay attention here, this gets insane. To overcome the obstacles, Tesla turned to firms that make test molds out of industrial sand with 3D printers. Using a digital design file, printers known as binder jets deposit a liquid binding agent onto a thin layer of sand and gradually build a mold layer by layer that can die-cast molten alloys. According to one source, the cost of the design validation process with sand casting, even with multiple versions, is minimal. Just three 
percent of doing the same with a metal prototype. That means Tesla can tweak prototypes as many times as needed, reprinting a new one in a matter of hours using machines from companies such as Desktop Metal and its Unit X1. The design validation cycle using sand casting only takes two to three months, which sounds like a long time actually, but two other sources said that compared uh, to metal casting, that's actually pretty good because that would take from six months to a year to do. This is just one reason why I love Tesla so much. They just keep on innovating and innovating and innovating and innovating while others are still trying to figure out the thing that Tesla has done a long, long, long time ago. People are still trying to figure out how to do a metal casting uh, mold. Tesla already moved on to the next thing. And here we also learn some new details about Tesla's next generation vehicle. The subframes in the car underbody are typically hollow to save weight and improve crashworthiness. At the moment, they are made by stamping and welding multiple parts together, leaving a void in the middle. To cast subframes with hollows as part of one giga casting, Tesla plans to place solid sand cores printed by the binder just within the overall mold. Once the part has been cast, the sand is removed to leave the voids. But despite that greater flexibility achieved in both the design process and the complexity of the large frames, there was still one more major hurdle to clear. The aluminum alloys used to produce the castings behave differently in sand and metal molds and often failed to meet Tesla's criteria for crashworthiness and other attributes. The casting specialists overcame that by formulating special alloys, fine-tuning the molten alloy cooling process and also coming up with an after-production heat treatment, three of the sources said. And once Tesla is happy with the prototype mold, it can then invest in a final metal one for mass production. The sources said Tesla's upcoming small car has given it a perfect opportunity to cast an EV platform in one piece, mainly because its underbody is simpler. The kind of small cars Tesla is developing, one for personal use and the other, a robotaxi, don't have a big overhang at the front and the back as there is not much of a hood or rear trunk. It's like a boat in a way, a battery tray with small wings attached to both ends. That would make sense to do in one piece, one person said. The sources said, however, that Tesla still had to make a call on what kind of gigapress to use if it decides to cast the underbody in one piece. And that choice would also dictate how complex the car frame would be. To punch out such large body parts fast, the people said Tesla would need new big gear gigapresses with massive clamping power of 16,000 tons or more, which would come with a hefty price tag and might need larger factory buildings. No, no, not might need larger factory buildings. Tesla would need larger factory buildings. Right now, we hear things about gigapresses of 10,000 tons or close to that number and we already think that's insanely crazy. This is 16,000 tons or more. The competition right now is trying to figure out, oh, how do we do this small, you know, maybe 5,000, 6,000 uh, ton gigapress? Small, <laughs> really, they are gigantic. But Tesla is already moving to the next thing that is so much more bigger than whatever everyone is trying to figure out right now. And people say, oh, Tesla has no moats. Well, it does because it innovates much faster than everyone else. Three of the five sources said one problem with presses using high clamping power, however, was that they cannot house the 3D printed sand cores needed to make hollow subframes. The people said Tesla could solve these obstacles by using a different type of press into which molten alloy can be injected slowly, a method that tends to produce higher quality castings and can accommodate the sand cores. But the process takes longer. Tesla could still choose high pressure for productivity or they could choose low alloy injection for quality and versatility, one of the people said. It's still a coin toss at this point. I don't often say uh, this about Reuters, but this article from Reuters was fascinating. If you go through this article and, and you think, yeah, well, competitors can still easily copy Tesla, but then you realize, oh, you, okay, you can use the sand thing, but then if you do that, then you have other issues. There's a huge major problem every step of the way. So these legacy automakers could invest money in this 
only to get nowhere. So many of them are trying to play it safe. Okay, we're just gonna keep doing what we did before. If Tesla eventually really figures it out and scales it to massive scale, which is inevitable, by the way, then we will look at what Tesla is doing and then maybe we'll try to copy. But by then, it's going to be too late for so many of them. Here, Sawyer's comment about this whole story. This is incredible. Hyundai just said it's going to start using Giga Castings only in 2026, six years after Tesla started using them and Tesla is reportedly already working on the next thing. Tesla's pace of innovation is insane. We got a new delivery estimate from Troy. His Earlier estimate was 452,000 and now it is 447,000. There's a question for Troy. Why do you have a drop in Model Y deliveries quarter over quarter? It's what the data shows. I guess it's related to no more order backlog in the US at the beginning of Q3. There was a backlog entering Q2. In other words, some of the cars delivered in Q2 were ordered before Q2. Therefore, it increases deliveries in that quarter. Create entire underbodies in EVs for very little money compared to the legacies. Jeez, oh, it's just the battleground for costs between Tesla and the other guys. It's an I unfair advantage. It is really silly to say that this is Tesla's unfair advantage. Tesla is innovating and working much harder than everyone else and therefore it's unfair. Troy just posted a production estimate and it is at 427,000 for this quarter. These are refresh model 3s in Shanghai and they will be exported from Shanghai to Europe. Looking forward to the first model 3s in Europe. Q4 is looking like over 500,000 deliveries, says James in response to this new drone footage, which reveals that a big new batch of refresh model 3s is being prepared for export from Shanghai Southport to Europe. Looks like the production ramp is going very well. Sometimes we see sales within China and we see that other automakers perhaps are selling also quite a few vehicles, but the thing that all of these charts are missing is the price comparison. So here is a list of vehicles that roughly sell in the same or similar price ranges as Tesla vehicles do. Tesla sells 50 times more Model Ys then uh, these companies sell these models. The Biden-Harris administration announced it is making $100 million available to improve EV charger reliability. How about you just take that money and give it all to Tesla so they can build chargers that actually work in the first place. This is promising and possibly good news. Chris says, okay, it's really exciting news. Tesla China has made significant progress and is tentatively scheduled to release FSD in Q1 of next year. Judging from the time, it will be FSD version 12. FSD take rate in China right now is very, very, very low. Maybe that will start changing it. There's a story on Barron's uh, that Tesla should sell stock to raise capital to pressure EV rivals, says a strategist. Sawyer disagrees. He says Tesla has over $23 billion of cash on hand and their free cash flow situation is good. They are upgrading multiple factories and are about to build two more all at once. Cybertruck should boost revenues massively and FSD 12 might convince a lot of people to get FSD. Gary, of course, does not agree that Tesla needs to raise capital. In fact, he thinks the opposite. He thinks Tesla should use up a good amount of cash to actually do a stock buyback. So this guy is a former automotive analyst and he says that Tesla's cash balance has not increased much over the last six months, even though its manufacturing footprint continues to grow. The company would market this cash raise as a competitive weapon, allowing Tesla to continue to grow its EV presence around the world regardless of economic conditions or competitive developments. I say Tesla is already doing all of these things, so I don't really see much of a point in that. And Elon has said many times before that Tesla is spending cash as fast as it possibly can. If you are already doing it as fast as you possibly can, you can't really do it faster, can you? And now Elon Musk also spends, I think, quite a bit more time on Tesla because he's not that busy with Twitter as he was before in, let's say, November and December. So I don't think it's a lazy excuse anymore. Oh yeah, they can't find any 
any way to spend any more money because I'm just too busy with other stuff. But if Elon somehow thinks of a new thing to do and he wants to raise money, go ahead. I will welcome that. But right now, I, I don't see the point really. Tesla remains a top pick for short sellers despite all of the good that is going on with Tesla right now. Carvao just showed the demonstration of how much more responsive the new display is in the new cars. You can see you move it and the screen moves with them immediately. And now here's the old display and pay attention to how it is not as responsive yet. Yeah, see, there's a delay. When he moves it, the screen does not, the mat does not follow his finger exactly, not immediately. Here's a new update on Tesla CV market share in the US for the January to July period. It was 59.5% of the EV market among all brands. The new Model 3 has started to arrive at Tesla showrooms in China, giving investors hope that maybe Tesla will not just continue exporting refresh Model 3s until the end of the quarter, but maybe will also start delivering these vehicles domestically within China. Also, there was some confusion uh, about this new Model 3 being called a Model 3 Plus. What's the plus all about? Well, Drive Tesla says that here's one example shared on social media showing a Model 3 Plus, which is what the long range variant is now called. I saw people saying that the Plus just means, oh, the Plus is the refresh Model 3. And if you don't have the Plus, that just means it's the old Model 3. I'm not entirely sure. I need to look further into this. Elon just sort of made a new announcement about the Cybertruck. James Dalmo said people who try to key a Cybertruck will be ruining their keys. And then Elon says we might be able to offer an optional coating which is basically scratch proof to everything below diamond hardness. You better have diamond keys if you want to key the Cybertruck. Volkswagen CV woes worsen with planned job cuts amid low demand. Yeah, and GM Stellantis and Ford are still dealing with that potential strike. At the same time, while they too will experience huge demand problems. And interestingly, even though a lot of the workers will be paid more, perhaps a lot of them might need to be fired. A Tesla insider just posted this on LinkedIn. He basically said, Tesla's auto bidder has grown his global portfolio to over seven gigawatt hours of battery storage under direct dispatch next year. And their real time algorithms have already returned over $330 million in trading profit to early storage investors. When do you think eventually we will have another note from Morgan Stanley saying, oh, um, uh, Tesla energy, yeah, that could be big actually. Maybe three years from now, maybe finally they will figure it out. Remember the girl that got her Model Y crushed? She's basically saying that she will buy another Tesla because safety to her is extremely important. James Stevenson just said, happy seven year anniversary to short seller Jim Chano's prediction that Tesla would go bankrupt if it merged with Solar City. That was such a long time ago now. And Elon said he should change his name to Thanos since half of his fund <laughs> disappeared. We need these longer supercharging cables. That's why V4 superchargers are relatively important now that the Tesla supercharging business is open to other brands as well. In his defense, the owner said this was the only way to plug in without blocking a second stall. It may also be a good idea for these other manufacturers to consider placing their ports in other places so that they can use Tesla's older chargers conveniently. This is crazy. You know that VinFast company, the company that barely made any EVs but was worth much more money than GM, Ford and BYD, regulatory filings reveal that VinFast sells most of its cars to related companies. If the UAW doesn't reach an agreement with GM, Ford and Stellantis by uh, midnight tonight, 145,000 workers will strike against the Detroit Big Three for the first time ever. GM, Ford and Stellantis will collectively lose an estimated almost $2 billion every week that passes without reaching a deal. If there's a strike, I don't expect it to be long though, says Sawyer. Mexico has surpassed China as the largest US trade partner for the first time in over 20 years, according to Bloomberg. This 
is a good reason for Tesla to diversify away from China because the tensions between the US and China are likely to continue increasing over the long term. Because with less trade between the two countries, the consequences of severe tensions are not as high. From Drive Tesla Canada, California Senate just approved a ban on autonomous trucks. This would require autonomous semi-trailer trucks to have a trained human safety operator whenever they operate on public roads within the state. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, watch this one first. My name is Matt Post. Just like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.